Hello students. In this video, we will see the introduction of mobile device operating system. A topic from Unit 5. Normally, what is operating system? Operating system is a piece of software responsible for management of operations, control, coordinate the use of the hardware among the various application programs, and sharing the resources of a device. In this picture, you can see how an operating system is acting as an interface between user and hardware. OS controls system applications, hardware devices such as keyboard, monitor, printer etc. Design and capabilities of a mobile OS is very different than a general purpose OS running on desktop machines. Mobile devices have constraints and restrictions on their physical characteristics such as screen size, memory, processing power and etc. Compared to computers, mobile phone screen size is very compact and its processing speed is limited. Scarce availability of battery power. That is, our mobile phones have limitations in battery capacity of up to 6000 MHz, whereas normal computers uses direct current. Limited amount of computing and communication capabilities. Thus, they need different types of operating systems depending on the capabilities they support. A PDA OS is different from a smartphone OS. Now we will see the operating system structure of a mobile phone. A mobile OS is a software platform on top of which other programs called application programs, can run on mobile devices such as PDA, cellular phones, smartphone etc. Totally there are four layers in this OS structure. First layer is an application layer, which is nothing but the apps we use in our smartphones. Second layer contains OS libraries which includes functions for file manipulation, for getting the current date and time, and other facilities related to the operating system. Third layer is a device operating system base, kernel. The kernel is a computer program at the core of a computer's operating system with complete control over everything in the system. It is the portion of the operating system code that is always resident in memory. It facilitates interactions between hardware and software components. Fourth layer contains basic hardware components required. There are many mobile operating systems. The followings demonstrate the most important ones. Java Platform, Micro Edition or Java ME, the computing platform for development and deployment of portable code for embedded and mobile devices such as microcontrollers, sensors, gateways, mobile phones, personal digital assistants, TV set-top boxes, printers. Palm OS is a discontinued mobile operating system initially developed by Palm, Inc. for personal digital assistance in 1996. Palm OS was designed for ease of use with a touchscreen-based graphical user interface. Symbian OS was originally developed as a closed-source OS for PDAs in 1998 by the Symbian LTD. Consortium, Symbian was used by many major mobile phone brands, like Samsung, Motorola, Sony Ericsson, and above all by Nokia. When you want an alternative operating system, Linux is usually the answer. When you want to replace Android with Linux you can try Ubuntu Touch, Sailfish OS and Plasma Mobile OS. Next comes the familiar OS like Windows OS, very popular Android OS, Blackberry OS and iPhone OS. Next we will see what is an J2ME platform. J2ME platform is a set of technologies, specifications and libraries developed for small devices like mobile phones, pages, and personal organizers. Java ME was designed by Sun Microsystems. It is licensed under general public license still J2ME is being used for game developing. There are special constraints under which the operating system of a mobile device should operate. Since it is a handheld device, only limited memory available. Screen size is very small compared to computer screen. Also, e-mobile device screen size varies. Compared to computer keyboard, mobile devices were having miniature keyboard. Mobile phones have limited processing power. 
Major issue with mobile phone is limited battery power. Limited and fluctuating of the wireless medium. We will see the special service requirements as follows. Support for specific communication protocols. Support for a variety of input mechanism. Compliance with open standard. Extensive library support. Thank you. We will continue with the next topics from Unit 5.